I'm chasing to be one of the greatest, all the greatest. Compare Alexander Volkanovsky to your favorite UFC champion. Now you'll probably run into a few problems. Is Alexander Volkanovsky unbeatable? He's too calculated, he's too smart, he's too good at everything. And the first problem is, he's probably better. Everybody's fucked at 45. It's never gonna happen. Technically, he's the best. Alex is a phenomenal fighter. Uh, Alexander Volkanovsky is pound for pound the best fighter in the world. In fact, Alexander Volkanovsky is levels above every UFC champion. Alexander Volkanovsky is a lot better than what I thought it was. Volkanovsky is still the best pound for pound fighter on the planet. I'm always gonna improve. I'm always going to get better. You're always going to see a better version of myself every time I step in that octagon. And if you disagree, give me a few minutes of your time and I will convince you. Because I can't let you make the mistake we've all made in this sport by overlooking greatness when it's right in your face. This is rugby, a pretty violent sport, and this is Alexander Volkanovsky. I know you did rugby before MMA, but how? That was when I was 214 pounds. I used to be 97 kilograms. That was a ridiculous amount it's of weight. It's still 100%, you know, I'm <laughs> five foot six on a good day, you know what I mean? I was just a ball. He was the prop, essentially a battering ram charging directly into the defensive line. NFL, you got the blockers, right? Like they're big, you know, I was pretty much playing that type of position. Just non-stop, you know, action and just running into brick walls pretty much. So it's pretty, pretty physical because a lot of people are like, you know, you know, what made you the champ? What made you like who you are today? I'm like, I just point at that pretty much and be like, that's the guy. You know? I'm such a hard worker. And, you know, I'm always putting the hours in the gym. You know, I'm so dedicated to this sport. I've always been gritty, hardworking sort of a mm. guy. That was a good example of it. And no martial arts training at all before that? Um, I wrestled. So I wrestled oh. uh, before I even done rugby league. I wrestled for about probably a year. I sort of gave it up and I was actually pretty good at it. I won the nationals, like, you know, obviously it's the wrestling's not as big in Australia as it is over here. But, you know, I still won, like, the Australian Championship twice and stuff like that. But then I just I just gave it up and started playing football. Yeah. This may seem irrelevant, but being a small man in competition with much larger men has been the story of Volkanovsky's entire career. Everyone thinks I'm short and then I'm punching them in the face and then next minute they you know their face changes real quick. Obviously me being a uh been looking like this since I, you know, since a young age, like, yeah, obviously you're gonna, yeah, I'm not the type to, to brag that, you know, I get into fights and all that sort of stuff, but when I was younger, that, that would happen, and uh, so I've always uh, been known to fight and been able to fight type of thing, I've always had to you know, sort of defend myself, never been the one to start it, but uh, yeah, there was times where I had to finish it. In fact, his first few MMA fights weren't at featherweight, he was a welterweight, fighting bigger, stronger, more experienced men, two weight classes above his natural state. Volk was very successful securing finish after finish, but in his fourth pro fight, he was TKO. This early loss prompted Volk to move down to lightweight and eventually featherweight. dominating the Australian circuit and capturing six separate titles in three weight classes. Alex looking just to oh, land that shots correctly. I think he's really doing it. He's having trouble with Nova. Just covering up. This is over. Be, oh, there's no, he's over. The including the AFC Featherweight Championship. Huge Alex trouble for Jamie Malarkey early. early. He gotta get to his knees and get to Alex is up. hurting him. Oh! Over! Over! He's oh, 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 he is knocked oh, out! Oh, Jamie oh, Malarkey! Oh, one could argue that this is a sloppy and unconventional road to kick off an MMA career. Comparatively, great fighters like John Jones, George St. Pierre, and Anderson Silva all had their weight classes decided on fairly early in their careers, giving them a clear path to build their legacies. And GSP, Jones, and Khabib sure as hell didn't lose any fights in regional promotions. But remember, outside of winning two national Greco-Roman titles when he was 12, Volkanovski wasn't the lifelong martial artist that Khabib Nurmagomedov or George St. Pierre were. He was an athletic standout who thought that his discipline and work ethic would carry him to new heights in a different sport, despite his clear disadvantage in his size. There's a lot of uh, hype around Volkanovski. It's his UFC debut here. Dude was a rugby player. Uh, so you know he's tough. 13 and one, he's on a ton, 10 fight win streak. He's fought in a couple of different weight classes. Four of his last five wins are via uh, KO. He's a rugged sort of rugby player, badass, brawler type of fighter. Minus 160 favorite for a guy making his UFC debut. Volkanovski made his UFC debut on November 26, 2016. Volk came out pretty aggressive and was taken down very early. Oh, nice 
Yeah, from Kushida. But even in his UFC debut, he showed us something minute that foreshadowed his championship mindset, his ability to make adjustments. His ground game in the middle of the round. It's a big, oh. powerful punches from the top position. Kasuya is a very durable guy, but these are power shots landed here by Volkanovski. And while that may seem simple, contextualize that under the bright lights in his first fight with the leader in mixed martial arts, Volkanovski was able to recognize that a striking heavy game plan of pressuring Kasuya to the cage wasn't going to work if Kasuya was first to the grappling exchanges. Kasuya's durability off the top and is being tested here midway through round two. So instead, Volkanovski took initiative and dominated Kasuya on the ground to a second round TKO. That's gonna do it! Alexander Volkanovsky! A fighter's ability to make adjustments is critical in extinguishing their opponent's momentum and turning the tide in their favor. Welcome to the big show, Alexander the Great Volkanovsky. You've been waiting a long time for this moment. Man, did you deliver. Gotta feel pretty good, man. Well, the, um, yeah, the original plan was to look for the knockout. Uh, no, I guess they are just clinched in. I felt stronger than him, even though he got on top of me. One of my favorite examples of mid-fight adjustments was Henry Cejudo's championship fight against Marlon Marias. Henry got his leg chewed up at range in the first round of their fight, unable to get any timing or rhythm on Marlon. But in between rounds, Henry made the adjustment to exit kicking range in favor of punching range, allowing him to pressure Marlon Marias to a finish. Yes. Without this adjustment, Henry Cejudo does not become a double champion in the UFC. But the difference between a debuting Volkanovski and an already accomplished Cejudo is that Volk was making these adjustments on the fly. As I've said on almost any interview, I wasn't happy just to make the UFC. I want to hit these top ranks. And if that isn't impressive enough, keep in mind that it's already 2016 and Volkanovski has a lot of catching up to do. Conor McGregor achieved champ champ status just two weeks prior to Volk's UFC debut. Max Holloway was only one month away from kicking off his string of featherweight title victories. Khabib Nurmagomedov was two fights away from starting his legendary championship reign, and George St. Pierre was less than a year away from his historic return to become a two-division champion. How was Volkanovski ever going to catch up? Let's talk about the matchup with Hirota, a guy that would not necessarily the best career record, but certainly a veteran, and he's on a nice little run. What do you think about how you guys match up and what he offers? I think I match up really well with him. I think I'm gonna be too strong and a bit too technical for him. First, I'll take him out. Alexander Volkanovsky! And then uh, we'll see what's next. Feed me the bad boys, and feed me the good at the 50 Gs while you're at it. Over the next two years, Volkanovsky tore through the featherweight division. I want to fight regularly. I want to fight, you know, I'm ready to fight. Even with these black eyes, I'll go in there in two weeks uh, and get another fight. So I want another couple of fights this year. So uh, if you could get me another one, bring him on. He basically like ran through the whole division other than bar me. I just feel like I'm on another level and uh, I got really got something to prove and I'm looking you know, at the big picture. 30-26, you can't, can't argue with a dominant finish though, a dominant uh, decision. What were the risks coming into this? Obviously, you've had a few opponent changes as well. I haven't had a good camp in the UFC yet. I tore an intercostal muscle just Wednesday night. Prior to your last fight, you actually had three opponent changes. That's crazy. Yep. Even this fight I actually tore my LCL 10 weeks ago. Couldn't even get out of bed. I was sitting there crying at night by myself. I've had nothing but terrible camps and I'm fighting and I'm winning. Coming in the UFC, I, you know, I was telling myself I can't lose, so the pressure was still on me. I feel like the pressure was off actually once being in the UFC. Now I'm here, I was like, oh, I can try and uh, put on a performance. I, I believe I can just finish uh, anyone in the, in the division. The new featherweight contender, Alexander Volkanovsky, 14 consecutive wins. You had to feel pretty good about this one tonight. Congratulations. I pride myself to be the nice guy and I don't call people yeah. out, but I'm going to have to call someone out. I'm a good guy. I've got pride in that. And I want these bad boys. I want these bullies. Bring them on. US Boise, July 14th versus Darren Elkins. He wears people's downs and breaks them, but you know, I, I just don't, I don't break. I always train hard, I always train, always um, prepare for the worst. So I prepare for a free round war. I know I'm gonna put on a performance and I know people are gonna expect me to be in these top ranks. But at the end of the day, I'm taking out everyone, I'm winning every round and I need, I, need, I need one of these top dogs if they want to challenge me. You wanted a top 10 guy, you wanted to fight in the States, you pass this test with flying colors. Who do you want next? You know, let's see how Chad Mendes does. If he takes a win, let's headline Adelaide. Come back to me, my turf, Chad Mendes, me main event. Let's do it. Alexander Volkanovsky, ladies and gentlemen.
And you might say that these initial five victories in the UFC were dominant because the opposition were young fighters and journeymen. But dominant performances are kind of what you expect from future GOATs in their early fights. You can't ask for more of a showcase for a proper mixed martial artist in their first UFC bouts than showcasing a complete skill set with their striking, wrestling, and submission skills than what Volkanovski was able to deliver. I mean, even the greats weren't doing as well this early in their UFC journey. In just his second UFC fight, could be Magomedov had already encountered a controversial victory over Glayson Tebow. Demetrius Johnson's third and fourth UFC fights were a loss to Dominic Cruz and a draw to Ian McCall. In his third UFC fight, George St. Pierre was submitted by Matt Hughes. And, and by his fourth UFC fight, John Jones had already earned a DQ loss by delivering 12 to 6 elbows to Matt Hamill. Can't do 12 to 6. And I know there's a lot of context for each of those fights, but my point remains that Alexander Volkanovsky was clearly taking a calculated route to the UFC championship, making very few errors inside or outside of the cage. He was doing almost too well, so to gauge his ceiling, why not put him against a man who only lost to UFC champions? Who calls that Chad Mendes? You know, not many people call that Chad Mendes. I want people in front of me, that's it. Up to this point, Chad Mendes had only suffered losses to Jose Aldo, Conor McGregor, and Frankie Edgar. You know, he's only lost to the greats, and then on the weekend, there's then another great that he loses to. And Volk was pretty confident he could join this elite group, improving himself in the division. I just don't think he's heads in the game like it used to be. I think I'm going to bring him into deep waters if it goes that long. In our styles, we're gonna we're gonna cancel a lot of things out. So I think I'm gonna catch him because of that. So I believe I'm the pound for pound strongest guy in, in, in the UFC. And I'm gonna show that Saturday night. You know, he's only lost to the greats of the sport. He's fought for the title a few times, but you know, this is my time and I just can't wait to step in the octagon and, and do my thing. Volk's fight against Chad Mendes put him on the map for a lot of fans. I'm expecting it to be fireworks. So you're gonna see a lot more hands thrown and uh, expect, a, expect a bang. You know, we're just both powerful. Expect uh, us to stand up and bang. And you know, we both hit hard, so. Honestly, just purely because of our styles, I think I'm knocking him out. Big opportunity for me and I'm going to capitalize and you know, everyone will know who I am Saturday night. But it was also a masterful performance, highlighting one of his most dangerous weapons, his feints. Volkanovski is keeping Mendez thinking too with all these feints. Chad Mendez looks good standing, but he doesn't look as comfortable standing. Volkanovski's feints might be too subtle for the naked eye. He looks less comfortable and also he's responding to a lot of the feints of Volkanovski. But in the first round, Volkanovski created an invisible pressure. He's keeping the pressure heavy on Mendez, making Mendez think. Overwhelming Chad Mendez and crippling him with something more dangerous than a strike, hesitation. I could see him start to crumble as soon as I had my way with him and um, it, went, it ended up going to plan. Beautiful combination. Volkanovski coming on strong. Volkanovski was like a predator cornering its prey, but going into the second round, Chad pounced back. Oh, there it is. Volkanovski down. It started with the right hand and now we're going to see Mendez have what about the explosive explosion that took part? But despite having less power than Mendez, Volkanovski had far more composure. I went down and I come back up, you know, I wasn't rocked and I just come straight back on him. Volkanovski, when you want oh, he's hurt, he's hurt! I was having fun in there as well, I really was. So it's good to, you know, a bit of adversity, but at the same time, I'm doing this for my family. You need to hit me more than that to stop me. And in the same round he faced tremendous adversity in, Volkanovski emerged on top. Putting a lot of pressure on Mendez. Respect. He's only lost to the greats and now he just lost to another great. I'm one of the most well-rounded. I put it together better than anyone in division. I'm Max Holloway's worst nightmare. Meeting Mendez is a big deal. I have a lot of respect for that guy. He's been in some incredible fights. I was an underdog. A lot of people didn't think I could do it. I proved them wrong. Beating him's a big deal. So he's in a very good position right now. And we'll see, we'll see what happens. Oh, I'll take Max on right now if, if I can. But if that doesn't happen, give me someone for the number one contender. While Max Holloway wouldn't be his next fight, Volkanovski got the next best thing. Aldo, you know what I mean? Jose Aldo, such a big fight, such a big name. Jose Aldo would be Volkanovski's toughest test. You know, he's the number one contender right now. So you take him out. You're the guy. You're the guy. You're the, you're the one who's fighting for that title next 100%. The King of Rio was already a legendary and accomplished featherweight champion. Mate, this fight is huge. You know, fighting Aldo is already 
just for the for my career, just for for me, it's such a big fight, fighting a legend of the sport. Who by this point had only lost in the UFC to two men who became champion. Aldo is still Aldo. He's still a very dangerous fighter, very explosive. He always was. He was even dangerous with Max. Like I always say in every fight, I prepare for the worst. So I'm preparing for a war. And I just think that, yeah, I think I'm just going to be too much for him come uh, May 11th. Meaning that for Volkanovski to beat Jose Aldo, he would have to be championship caliber. My performance uh, against Aldo to UFC 238. Mate, it was, a, it was very high level. For three straight rounds, Volkanovski outlanded a former champion 3-1. to one. No one has done that to Aldo. No one has really stumped him and really shut him down like I did. Volkanovski is fighting a perfect fight right now, to be honest. I can stand with the best of them. I can wrestle with the best of them. I can grapple with the best of them. And then again, I put it together better than anyone in the UFC, I believe. And controlled him for nearly five minutes straight. Volkanovski, get to the pressure now. He looks strong here too. The way I blend all the all the disciplines together, I believe I do it better than anyone else. Bringing things to the table that he hasn't dealt with before. But I think it was just the work rate that carried Alexander, not only in the middle of the octagon, but also against the side of the octagon whenever he would get into the clinch. When I'm in front of you, putting that pace, it's going to be hard to pull the trigger. You're going to be worrying about what I'm doing, and then that he's going to stuck onto my tempo. A chess match if I'd ever seen one, and Volkanovski earned checkmate without even losing a pawn. Alexander! The great Volkanovski! 17 consecutive wins, 7 0 in the UFC, none bigger than this one. You have conquered Jose Aldo. Overall thoughts on the fight tonight? My analyst, DC, and Dom felt like you fought the perfect fight. Hey, well, I'm next in line 100%. I'm the only one who's undefeated in the top three now. I should be ranked number one. Let's set it up. Speaking of the title, I mean, I think your case is pretty rock solid at this point. There was absolutely no question who Volkanovski was facing next. Max Holloway. Max Holloway. Max Holloway. Max Blessed Holloway. You know, greatest featherweight of all time. It's just a huge win for me. I want that title. I definitely, as you said, you know, my, my claim's rock solid. Uh, you know, I'm undefeated. You know what I mean? I just beat number one contender. You know what I mean? So I'm the guy. I really am. Max Holloway was coming off his third title defense to Frankie Edgar. So at the end of the day, the Blessed Express is going around in a circle. We laughing you, bro. And at this point, the Blessed Express was an unstoppable train at featherweight. Blessed era, 10 Island, baby. What's up? Max dominated the weight class, going undefeated in 14 fights over six years. He's the baddest mother I think he's the best 145 or ever. And he actually finished the King of Rio to become champion. If you think you're the best, come fight Bless. And that's who Volkanovski had to dethrone? I mean, Khabib became champion over Ally Aquinta. John Jones dethroned a declining Shogun Hua. And Demetrius Johnson won the first flyweight tournament to get his belt. And I'm not trying to downplay these accomplishments. These fighters are all great. But out of the greats, it seems that only Anderson Silva and George St. Pierre defeated defending champions to earn their title reigns. That's as much of an obstacle as you can have in front of you. You're fighting Max Holloway, who's reigned at, at featherweight for a while. He's on an amazing win streak. I can't wait. I can't wait to show the world why I'm, you know, I'm one of the best in the world. One of the best mixed martial artists, not not a 45er, one of the best fighters in the world. Max is a great champion, you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm expecting him to be a tough fight. He did what he had to do, 7 fight win streak, I think. Uh, 17 overall. 17 overall. If he had to fight for an intro, he'd do it. If he had to fight people under him, he'd do it. That's the same exact way I came up. I believe I'm a tough uh, matchup for him. Even three years ago, the fight I was three years ago, I think could give him problems. Right. Yeah, but now I'm just so much more evolved from then. I just believe that I'm more than the guy to do what I really am. There's a lot of things that uh, this guy presents. I've always thought I was a bad matchup for him. His power, his cardio, his strength, his wrestling. Dude is a striker too, so. Again, he's going to put himself in positions where he thinks he can maybe get a hand ahead, but he's going to run into a brick wall. And again, this is no disrespect to him. Like I still, I'm, I know it's going to be competitive, but I just think I'm going to do enough every round. I know I'm going to land some big shots and he's still going to come at me. He's got his punching involved. Volume, uh, his gas tank, and all these sort of things. These are things that I don't believe are big threats to, to me. He'll realize that it's not going to work for me pretty early in that fight. I'm already a dangerous fighter, and the fact that I won't slow down, he's going to put himself in positions where, yeah, he needs to try and break me, right? He needs to work his game. I am not going to break, and, and he knows I won't break. That's something that he really needs to worry about. Mm. That's a nightmare for him. Man, I know I've said it. I'm the, I'm the man for the job, and I really do believe that. And uh, I get to show the world that. And with him saying um, that he's the one that's going to do this, that, you need that confidence. I don't, I don't, I want to fight a confident guy. Even if you beat Max Holloway, there's still a lot of ground to cover before you become the champion that he is. I end up looking at a, a pro's picks. Not one of them picked me. Not one. But I use that as motivation. There's going to be doubters again. I'll prove them wrong. 
and uh, I'll just keep doing what I do until everyone knows that I'm the best. Little did we know how right Volkanovski was. Volkanovski throwing big, heavy hands. Yeah, hard low kicks too. Holloway has got to check these kicks. I mean, to this point, Volkanovski's fighting a great fight. It was a tightly contested fight. Holloway's trying to touch him. Volkanovski trying to smash him early. That's one of the things that Holloway does. He walks you down. He touches you, touches you, touches you. And as the fight goes long and you start to fatigue is when he really starts to put more on his strikes. Volkanovski's distance management is outstanding. They have studied Max Holloway's game very well. Volkanovski has unbelievable cardio, man, and he's showing it right now. Really impressive cardio here, folks. I mean, this Volkanovski is the real deal. Volkanovski invested heavily in his movement and setting traps for Holloway. He is keeping up and matching the pace of Max Holloway, something we have not seen people do very often. This is probably the most anyone's ever attacked his leg. Very effective in attacking that lower body inside and out. I can't remember a fight where his leg has been attacked this much. The whole leg is getting chewed up. This kid's got a championship level mindset, man. Volk picked apart Holloway from all different angles. Nice left hook by Volkanovski. Volkanovski picking his spots beautifully here. Max Holloway's left leg is toast. Pretty good one too from Volkanovski. This Volkanovski is a fantastic fighter, man. Volkanovski didn't destroy Holloway. Beautiful jab by Holloway. Beautiful knee to the body by the champ. Good right hand by Holloway. But he came at a sitting champion aggressively and mixed his skill set so well that he just couldn't be denied. What a fight. What a fight. And no! Australia, look at this. I'm bringing it back home, baby. I'm only 28. I'm only getting better. I'll be back, boy. I'm telling you, I'm going to stay champion for a long time. You deserve it. You are the new undisputed featherweight champion of the world. We did it! a new champion. His name is Alexander Volkanovsky. Who just dethroned Max Holloway. You are now the world champion UFC featherweight king. For Volkanovsky to come in and beat Max Holloway. I said I was the guy to do it. He has won 18 in a row. Big deal. It's a big deal to do that. Again, he's a, he's a great champion. You know, obviously it was never going to be an easy fight. Only three opinions matter tonight and uh, it didn't go my way. Bless their ends tonight uh, in the featherweight division. And now Volkanovski could put Max Holloway in his rear view mirror and begin a prosperous title reign, right? This is, is a situation that warrants an immediate rematch, don't you think? Rematch Australia. Do I have to beat him to prove that I'm a better fighter? I think like we had five rounds to do it and uh, I'm pretty sure I won it pretty clearly. Why not? Why not do the rematch and do it in Australia? Most people thought I won every round. The, the, one of the judges did. I just don't see anyone out there that sticks out other than Max. I'll be ready for it and he does deserve it and uh, you know that'll make for a big fight so maybe we do that rematch in uh Australia. The rematch between these two was inevitable. I'm a little upset. I feel a little disrespected uh, how, thing, how things have been. I think uh, he's uh, showing a side of him, himself that uh, I haven't seen before and I don't think it suits him very well. You said he's acting like a challenger. What, what did you mean exactly by that? He can say whatever he wants. I'm the champ. I got the belt. I beat him. How is he talking? Is he talking like a champion? He sounds a bit salty. He sounds a bit, you know, he's got a sour taste in his mouth. I don't know what it is. I guess losing's hard, but I mean, I just didn't think he would take it that way. At the end of the day, he's, I feel like he, he attacked me, called me out to fight. I'm a champion chasing the contenders. That's something a challenger does, doesn't it? I, I don't know. I still feel like a, a, a challenger in a way. That's just how I look at it. That's how I keep myself motivated. So what was it that ultimately made it an, an immediate rematch for a fight that you won pretty handily? He said that he wanted to rematch. He wanted to fight me. I told myself, you know what, I want this. I think this is the biggest fight for me. He thought he won the fight, a uh, biased co uh, commentary. He's playing it off like he won that fight. <laughs> that means oh, no, I don't think he's going to make the right adjustments. I believe I won pretty much every exchange we did. I don't think he can change too much, but he's going to have to go a lot more. The blessed era has ended in, in the featherweight division. I'm going to prove that this weekend. I've got something to prove, so this is going to be fireworks. I'm motivated and I'm going to put him away. And uh, if he's going to keep acting the way he is, he's just going to make it uh, feel even better once my hand gets raised. But would the second fight play out any differently? Yeah. So Holloway has Volkanovski on his heels at times here early. Yeah, he's certainly got a big lead. Ooh. Oh, look, that's an amazing combination. Holloway looks so sharp tonight, reacting perfectly. Good round for Max Holloway, just seems to have a perfect answer. Volkanovski was just one beat behind Max Holloway this fight. Oh, wow. Wow. 
Oh, look at that. Max is just laser focused. Holloway has had the edge in all three rounds. Volkanovski is to win this fight. He needs a finish. It wasn't a wash. It was just a very, very close fight. Volkanovski doubles up on the inside leg kick there. Partial connection there from Volkanovski, but Max reading things pretty well defensively. I'd be lying if I didn't say Holloway is almost up three rounds here. Yeah, Max is holding the center of the octagon the whole time, and he's hurting Volkanovski with frequency. Oh, oh man, he's down again. Got to do something different because if he carries on like this, we got an new on our hands. Admittedly, Volkanovski came on strong in the later rounds. A left hook lands for Volkanovski. Look at that. Nice trip. Nice right hand from Volkanovski a moment ago. Got caught with a big one there. And a late takedown for Volkanovski. And that may have just been what kept his belt in Australia. And still! I got the job done. You know, like I said, uh, no one can out me in there and nothing but respect to Max. Does this give you the closure in the series that you would like? Happy with the win, you know, to beat Max back to back, to back like that. That's saying something. I'm uh, you know, happy to finish the chapter. Volkanovski certainly dealt with a lot of doubt and controversy surrounding his victory. Were you scoring that one along? Or did you have Volkanovski winning? Did you have Holloway? What'd you think? Listen, man, you can't leave it. You can't leave it to these guys. We got some bad judging. All you did was fight and do your thing, and now you're being, you know, called all kinds of names. Again, I feel like I could have done a lot better, but I'm still showed that I'm the best fighter in the world. Not only is the best fighter in the world not the champion, the best fighter in the world doesn't even have a road to become the champion, and I do think that is a little bit of an injustice for what my eyes showed me tonight. Alexander Volkanovski versus Max Holloway. I was a little upset. thought Max did enough. I scored a three rounds to do for Max Holloway. I thought this was ultimate vindication for him. I thought Max Holloway looked great. I'm disappointed that he didn't get the win. People, you know, feeling like Max was robbed, etc. I want to say Rob. He got job because he <laughs> definitely won that fight. A lot of people uh, were unhappy with the, the decision. That was very hard to do on Volkanovski's part, even though I think that should have been Max Holloway's night. I think it's 84% of the BT Sport audience believe that Max Holloway should have had his uh, hand raised. Did anybody in here score for Volkanovski? Anybody have for Volkanovski? Nobody in the media. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. We'll, we'll have to figure it out. And it was bound to happen at some point. A controversial title defense is almost a prerequisite for greatness. Many of our greatest champions have retained their titles when they probably shouldn't have. Does anybody here think that Johnny Hendricks didn't win the fight? I'm blown away that George St. Pierre won that fight. And listen, I'm a promoter. He's the biggest pay-per-view star on, on the planet for me and I still don't think he won that fight. Going into the last round, I had uh, Dominic Reyes three to one. My kids are terrorizing me that the fix is in and how can this happen, dad? Reyes won that fight. I've been hearing this all night. John Jones won the fight, it was a draw. Reyes won the fight. It's all over the map. And it doesn't matter. We're not judges. And despite the fact that most media members and fans, including myself, felt that Max Holloway should have won, they already fought twice and both the UFC and the division had to move on to a brand new chapter. Bald Volkanovski. Bald Volk is coming for everyone, I told you that. Now we didn't immediately get Bald Volk. In between, we got to witness Volk's rivalry to Brian Ortega on The Ultimate Fighter. We were too distracted by their feud to fully appreciate what was happening. Apologies for Ortega making us all wait. You're on my time. On your time. Yep. Oh, the man, all right. Volk was given a fresh opportunity to breathe and develop his legacy outside his battles to Max Holloway. You know, we're having our words. He's like, ah, oh, you know, I don't get in that. If you want to say it, say it in my face, I'll fight you in the elevator. And I told him, again, mate, I'll fight you in the elevator too. We both grew up fighting our whole lives. Don't think that for one minute I wouldn't fight you in the streets as well. You ain't the only one. I don't even believe half the stories you're telling the world anyway. <laughs> Every word that comes out of, his, uh, out of his mouth annoys me now. I can't wait to punch <laughs> put, put some hands on him, man. What upsets me the most is I'm professional and he's unprofessional. He ain't doing what I'm doing, I guarantee ya. I put, I put the hard yards in my whole life. I've, I've worked my ass off from day one. No shortcuts, especially in this career. That's how I got this belt. I see weakness. I seen it while we were even in the Ultimate Fighter. He half assed it, turns up training late. You know what I mean? You name it. I just see weakness, you know, I'm unprofessional. He puts on a front, acts like uh, he's all chill and uh, you know, all that type of shit. I just, I see through the bullshit, to be honest with you. You know what I mean? Shit like that, that shit annoys me. It's not professional and I ain't about that shit. He deserves to be here, I'll give him that. But he ain't taking the belt. He's still got the punches chance uh, or that submission chance. So again, I'm gonna give him a credit where credit's due, but that's all I think he, he has on me. Maybe I'm reading too much into this, but I wanna talk about the hair. A, no. it looks good. I have it nice and shiny and slippery on the day, uh, but you know, I'm pretty <laughs> hard to get into a guillotine Correct. anyway. But if we do get there, I'm already prepared and <laughs> just pop it out and then uh, 
touches it through the canvas. Bald Volkanovsky was his final form, his fresh persona rising from the ashes in a need to become something different, something better. Nice right hand there. Big right hand there from the champ. That right hand cut Ortega over his left eye. The first two rounds of this fight are a classic Volkanovski championship performance. Nice stick there by Volkanovski. There's another right hand over the top. Good slip and counter right there from the champ. Oh, nice combination there by Brian. Oh, that's a big right hand or so it appeared from the champ. I think that right hand hurt him a little bit, John. Beautiful combo there from Volkanovski. Anytime Volkanovski flinches, Ortega needs to step in and throw something. But there is one moment we will never forget. Chin down, chin down. You talk about just how tight, because it looked incredibly tight. When he dove on that guillotine choke, I was like, I wish people could see how beautiful that is the way I see it. It was a f I'm about to lose the belt deep. I was, I was on top celebrating, I'll be honest with you. The way he slipped it in and got mount on a world champion. I had him in that guillotine and I was just like, I'm about to be a world champ. This sequence of adversity for Volkanovski might seem like a point of weakness. I was deep. That was as deep as it can get. That kind of guillotine with a guy like that is death. But the beauty of these moments is not the mistake of the champion. It is their inability to accept failure when it is so easy. Nine point nine nine percent of the people who have ever lived would have tapped out. Oh, how the f did this man get out of that choke? Just opened a little bit of space. I'm like, all right, I'm good. And then got my chin out, and then it was all good. Volkanovski didn't just rally back from a near loss. Yeah. Full guillotine mount, our world champion, and oh. that crazy mother from Australia got out. And then it was like, oh, he's on top now. I was like, okay. <laughs> He's pissed. He beat the brakes off Ortega the remainder of the fight to leave no doubt who won. I'm a normal human being. I've said it time and time again. Just hard work got to me where I am. Anyone can do what I've done. Anyone. Sky's the limit for any of you. You are the featherweight champion of the world. Is it finally time for people to put some respect on your name, Alexander? About time, 100%. To my family, to my teams, everyone that's backed me, everyone that's helped me. I did that for you, thank you. All them doubters, I'm gonna keep proving you wrong time and time again. Bring it. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up to the champion of the world, Alexander the Great Volkanovski. And however impressive his win over Ortega was, Volk's two title defenses in 2022 would be even more shocking. It's a new face, it's, well not really a new face. Zombie as an opponent, when you look at him and you compare him to, you know, Ortega and, and Max Holloway, as a challenge, you know, what can you say about him? He's been around for a long time, he's been at the top of the, the division for a long time, so it's a fight I've always wanted. He's the type of guy who will eat one to give one, you know what I mean? He'll cut, try and catch you coming in, he'll definitely eat it and try and catch it coming in. So you need to be careful how you come in and approach that. The Korean zombie had a respectable UFC career up to this point. I'm happy for him that he got a title shot. He's probably gonna be his uh, last title shot. He's always been a really entertaining fighter, but I think people have kind of slept on him being like, he's really good. He was a feared, ferocious, and experienced presence in the octagon. I got a lot of respect for him. Um, as a fighter, and he is dangerous, but at the same time on a whole nother level. Where I'm at right now, I can't see myself being beaten. He's going to be making some uh, bad decisions in there, I believe, and I'm going to capitalize. That's why I feel like this is going to be a fun fight and going to be a really good showing for me. This might be his final chance yep. at a title shot, so it, it's, it's his time. If I have to grab him, throw him to the floor, get a submission, punch his face through the canvas, whatever it is, mm -hmm. uh, that's what I believe will happen. I won't be happy if I don't, just purely because I expect that from myself. We're going to and you're gonna see f***ing greatness, let's go! But as always, Volkanovski was a tall order. The zombie seemed to have no answers for Volkanovski. Zombie's in a world of pain right now, man. He's been getting hit with every shot Volkanovski is throwing. Zombie seems a step behind right now. Two more big shots. Oh, goodness. Beautiful right hand. He's picking these shots and he's landing. The champion was so clearly levels above the challenger, picking him apart and building momentum to what seemed inevitable. Oh! performances ever. I mean, dominant from start to finish. He couldn't look better than he looked tonight. He looked incredible. You look just unbeatable out there. 21 wins in a row. I think tonight he came out and made a statement, you know what I mean, that I'm I'm the baddest dude in this division of the world. I don't think anyone's ever done that to Zombie. Not like that. He made the Zombie look like he didn't even belong there. Fight probably could have been stopped around 
before it did. What what comes next? Because it just seems like it's so difficult to put a cap on where you can succeed and who you can succeed against. Bald Volkanovsky slayed the zombie, but the ghost of his past still haunted him. I think Max may fresh be the only a guy. Fresh Max yeah, a fresh Max Holloway. A fresh Max Holloway. A fresh Max Holloway. Because other than that, like I can't see any of these other guys in the division giving him any give him a, a competition. He owes it to Max Holloway to say, listen, I am the greatest featherweight of all time. I got to beat you convincingly in order to prove I like that. that. That's a great point. Everyone wants to say it anyway. Everyone's pumped up for it, the trilogy. It's the champ versus the former champ for the third time. I know this is still the biggest fight we could do, and I know how I know what a position it puts me after this. So that's why we're doing it again. We're still not 100% sure who the best who, who the best guy at that weight class is. Oh, you guys, damage this, damage that. I'm known for taking damage, and he's known for not giving it. So let's get it. We're gonna see Saturday night, right? That's the beauty of it. That's why you can't spar anymore, because you're punching the head too much. He's gonna run into some heavy shots if he comes at me. Where I'm at, and you know, and my confidence, uh, I believe uh, I am gonna dominate it. Bald Volk, as I said, like he's a whole different beast, you know what I mean? <laughs> and he hasn't faced Bald Volk yet. I'm gonna be unbeatable Saturday night, and people are gonna see it. Rivalries and rematches are nothing new for our greatest champions. But what separates some of the greats from the absolute god tier is how they performed across their rivals in the final match. Max is having a hard time with the timing. Shot opened up a big cut, or so it appears. Unlike their first two outings, Volkanovski was always way ahead of Max. The guy's landing at an absurd rate tonight. The big shots so far have been landed by the champion. Nice combination by the champ. It felt like Volkanovski was in a light spar and Max Holloway was in a fight for his life. He has made Max miss 68% of the time on official. I just think that Volkanovski looks better. Every round, Volkanovski outstruck, outworked, outmaneuvered, and outperformed one of the best fighters to ever compete in the weight class. And tonight, he's on another level. He will go up 3-0 if Max Holloway does not finish him here, and he will have done it in a way that there will be no more questions. And by the end, it was a shutout. And still! Volkanovski was so dominant in his last three performances that one division didn't seem like enough for him. I don't think the, the, this division itself can keep me busy. I want to move up, go for double champ, and I'll keep two divisions busy. Now is our plan. Fly to all the way to Australia and fight in pound for pound king backyard with Volkanovski. Is there anything you want to say to the pound for pound best fighter in the world, Alexander Volkanovski? I didn't see this short guy. Bring him here. The lightweight on the line, pound for pound number one on the line. Let's do it. This was certainly a super fight for the ages. Volkanovski versus Islam is so fascinating. I think that's uh, that's the fight I wanted to see. It is a challenge. I am moving up. This isn't a fight where I can just come in and, ah, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. I need to be on my game. To take uh, the belt off him, it's going to be an incredible feat. So uh, I hope people realize what I'm, uh, what I'm trying to do. And when I do it, I can't wait. Do I believe he is as good as a number one pound for pound? Yeah. Or number two pound for pound? Yeah, for sure. Supposedly he doesn't really respect me as an opponent. He's thinking I'm going to be easy. He says he's well-rounded. We'll see how good his stand-up is. He might be comfortable because he thinks I'm going to be easy to take down. I'm going to hold him down and all that. So I think he might be a little bit comfortable at the start. But what about if he doesn't? I'm in a good position right now, but I'm chasing to be like, you know, one of the greatest, all the greatest. You know what I mean? Again, that's not going to be up to me to decide, but that's where that's where I want to be. Volk had accomplished so much, and Islam Makachev was supposed to be the second coming of Khabib. He said you're too small. He said you're not powerful enough. I meet uh, Volkanovski in the downstairs. He's a like, short guy. This guy is so small. I, I'm going to stop this guy. He thinks that the power and strength is going to be an issue. I don't think that's an issue at all. I think he's big enough to compete against a guy like Islam, who's a really big 55. That's a great question. Yeah, man, uh, he'll be surprised by my power, my strength. Again, if, they, if he thinks I'm just going to be some weak little uh, featherweight, then he's going to be for a rude shock. We see tomorrow. So I'll show you what short people can do. Well, the Australia don't have rest. That's why I think it. He's pushing narrative that there's no wrestling in Australia. Coming to my, my country and say we don't have wrestling? Yeah, all right. Well, uh, I'm going to have to do something about that. I love people down to me. I prove them wrong all the time, and I plan on doing that on Sunday. Let him, uh, let him think he, think he's invincible. Uh, let him push that narrative. Say these guys are unstoppable, because that just makes my victory even bigger. So uh, I'm going to ride with that narrative and just show you what I can do and shock the world. Alex is good. Alex is good everywhere, but I am the different. I have different style. And this is why I just feel like it's, it's, it's going to be too much work for, for Alexander. I just have a weird feeling Alexander might pull it off. The bigger question, how good is Islam? I think Islam has better chances to win, honestly, but I don't count Alexander Volkanovsky out of the fight. Tomorrow there's going to be a big moment. 
and we get to do it here in Australia. Tomorrow we put it all on the line, but tomorrow I'm coming for everything. Let's go! But what was an undersized and widely dismissed Volkanovski going to do to the monster from Dagestan? Volkanovski took it to Islam on the feet. He stuffed most of Islam's takedown attempts. He negated Islam's ground attacks. Volk doing a great job defending the job. He essentially feels unshokable given the way he was able to escape. He outlanded him in three out of five rounds and in the fight as a whole. And the end of the fifth round was a sight to behold. But it was Makachev's aggressive control time paired with a beautiful striking display that edged Volkanovski away from double champion. That's insane. What? What? That's insane. You like or you don't like? I am best fighter in the world right now. Thank you. But although Volkanovski lost the fight, there was a moral victory here. This is so short and hard opponent. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Vol that was an incredible fight. That was the toughest fight of his career. Nothing wrong with challenging yourselves. I'm a better fighter because of this. <laughs> the featherweights, you better watch out because uh, you challenge yourself like this, it only makes you stronger. When it went to the scorecards, were you confident you were the winner? Oh. You said that uh, you felt like you won all the other rounds. Did you feel like that right away in the moment or when the fight was over, were you nervous a little bit? Uh, honestly, I feel I'm not lose for sure, like three rounds. Set the result aside completely. What, how do you feel about your performance tonight? Could have done better. You know, I know I could have done better. I know it's not going to be easy fight, but I beat him in an decision. It was good experience for me. A lot of people, you know, obviously were, you know, doubting me, didn't think it was even going to be close. And nevertheless, a lot of people are, you know, proud of what, what happened there because they expected me to not do so well. With, but for me, I expected to win. So uh, I'm hard on myself. I never fight five rounds. That's right. Good experience. Some of the rounds that you each won were very decisive, right? You in the five, him in the four when he got the body triangle. Um, but then the other rounds, man, I mean, they're just very close. It doesn't matter how I won today, and now I'm not just champion, I'm best fighter in the world, and you know, I am very happy. Obviously, I knew it was close, but. You know, obviously I wouldn't be surprised if I got my hand raised as well. The MMA community recognized that he did what most lightweights or featherweights hadn't done to that point. And because of that, his stock rose higher and he maintained his number one pound for pound ranking over Makachev. The rankings committee came out with the rankings 48 hours later, just on schedule, and they kept Volkanovski number one. If any other lightweight on the roster was standing across Volkanovski that night, it's hard to deny that he would have walked away with that belt. Such a high profile loss might have damaged the mindset of a lot of champions, especially when a new and present danger was looming around the corner. But as we already know, Volkanovski's mind is an impenetrable chamber, compelling his body to make even good fighters seem like they don't belong. No one can actually beat me. I don't believe anyone can beat me. The debate is starting whether you're the greatest featherweight ever. Is Alexander Volkanovsky now the featherweight GOAT? Do I think I'm there right now? No. I'm not going to claim that, that yet. Volkanovsky is the GOAT right now. He's definitely the featherweight GOAT. He is the featherweight GOAT in my eyes. The GOAT of 145 pounds is Volkanovsky. I'm going to go ahead and do my thing. People want to claim it for me. Uh, all good, but... Uh, I still got some work to do. Look, I know I said Volkanovski is better than every UFC champion, but that comes with an asterisk. He is certainly better than almost every champion that has held a title during his championship reign. But even as I looked back at our greatest historical champions that may have more defenses and more accomplishments, you can't deny the parallels between Volk's unfinished journey and that of your favorite legends. His well-rounded skill set, mindset, fight IQ and championship attitude are a rare combination. Maybe it's more fair to say he's greater than 98 or 99% of historical UFC champions. But I have no doubt that in a few years, we'll all be talking about how a five foot six semi-pro rugby player turned MMA fighter from Australia stood tall above the rest.